The Elephant's Ball and Grand Fete Champestre by W. B. The insects and birds, with the balls and their feasts, caused much conversation among all the beasts. The elephant, famous for sense as for size, at such entertainments expressed much surprise. Says he, Shall these impudent tribes of the air to break our soft slumbers thus wantonly dare? Shall these petty creatures, us beasts far below, exceed us in consequence, fashion, and show? Forbid it, true dignity, honor, and pride, a grand rural fete I will shortly provide, that for pomp, taste, and splendor shall far leave behind all former attempts of a similar kind. The buffalo, bison, elk, antelope, pard, all heard what he spoke with due marks of regard. A number of messengers quickly he sent to the beasts far and near to make known his intent. The place he designed for the scene of his plan was a valley remote from the dwellings of man, well guarded with mountains, embellished with trees, and furnished with rivers that flowed to the seas. Here first came the lion, so gallant and strong, well known by his mane that is shaggy and long. The jackal, his slave, followed close in his rear, resolved the good things with his master to share. The leopard came next, a gay sight to the eye, with his coat spotted over like stars in the sky. The tiger, his system of slaughter, declined, at once a good supper and pleasure to find. The bulky rhinoceros came with his bride, well armed with his horn, and his coat of mail hide. Then came the hyena, whose cries, authors say, oft lead the fond traveller out of his way, whom quickly he seizes and renders his prey. The wolf hastened hither, that ruffian so bold, who kills the poor sheep when they stray from the fold. The bear, having slept the long winter away, arrived from the north to be merry and gay. The panther, ferocious, the lynx of quick sight, the preacher and glutton, came hither that night. The camel, so often with burthens oppressed, was glad for a while from his labor to rest. The sloth, when invited, got up with much pain, just groaned out, Ah, uh, no, and then lay down again. The fox near the hen-roost no longer kept watch, but hied to the feast better viands to catch. The monkey, so cunning and full of his sport, to show all his talents, came to this resort. The dog and grimalkin, from service released, expected good snacks at the end of the feast. The first at the gate, as a sentinel stood, the last kept the rats and the mice from the food. The crowd of strange quadrupeds seen at the ball, twere tedious and needless to mention them all. To shorten the story, suffice it to say, some scores, nay, some hundreds, attended that day. But most of the tame and domestical kind, for fear of some stratagem, tarried behind. Due caution is prudent. But laws had been made. No beast on that night should another invade. Before we go farther, tis proper to state, 
each female was asked to attend with her mate. Of these, many came to this fete of renown, but some were prevented by causes well known. Now, soul had retired to the ocean to sleep. The guests had arrived, their gay vigils to keep. Their hall was a lawn of sufficient extent, well skirted with trees, the rude winds to prevent. The thick woven branches, deep curtains displayed, and heaven's high arch, a grand canopy made. Some thousands of lamps, fixed to poplars, were seen, that shone most resplendent, red, yellow, and green. When forms, introductions, and such were gone through, twas quickly resolved the gay dance to pursue. The musical band, on a terrace appearing, performed many tunes that enchanted the hearing. The ape, on the hot boy, much science displayed. The monkey, the fiddle, delightfully played. The orang-a-tang touched the harp with great skill. The ass beat the drum with effect and good will, and the squirrel kept ringing his merry bells still. The elephant, stately, majestic, and tall, with cousin rhinoceros, opened the ball with dignified mane. The two partners advanced, and the de la cour minuet gracefully danced. The lion and unicorn, beasts of great fame, with much admiration, accomplished the same. The tiger and leopard, an active young pair, performed a brisk jig with an excellent air. Next, Bruin stood up with a good-natured smile, and capered a hornpipe in singular style. With the staff in his paws, and direct all the while. The fox, wolf, and panther, their humors to please, danced three-handed reels with much spirit and ease. A few tried cotillions, and such like French fancies, but most of them joined in John Bull's country dances. Some beasts were not used to these violent motions, and some were too old or too grave in their notions. Of these a great many diverted their hours with whist, loo, backgammon, quadrille, or all fours. Much time being spent in these pleasing diversions, a motion was made to remit their exertions, for supper was waiting, which on this occasion was managed with skill and exact regulation. The bosom of earth a firm table supplied. The cloth was green grass, with gay flowerets bedyed. The various utensils by nature were cast, and suited completely this antique repast. The generous host had provided great plenty, to suit various palates of every dainty. Some scores of fat oxen were roasted entire, for those whose keen stomachs plain beef might require. Profusion of veal, nice lamb, and good mutton, to tickle the taste of each more refined glutton. Abundance of fish, game, and poultry, for those whose epicure palates such niceties chose. Ripe fruits and rich sweet meats were served in great store, of which much remained when the banquet was o'er. For, as to mild foods of the vegetative kind, few guests at the table to these were inclined. Rare hap for such persons as travelled that way, by chance or design, on the following day, 
on wine and strong spirits, few chose to regale, as most were accustomed to Adam's old ale. When supper was ended, and each happy guest had freely partaken of what he loved best, of toasts and of sentiments various were given, as health to our host and the land that we live in. The former was drank with huzzas three times three, which echo repeated with rapturous glee. Now mirth and good humor pervaded the throng, and each was requested to furnish a song, which many complied with, but such as denied some whimsical, laughable story supplied. The lion, Britannia rule, sung mighty well. The tiger, in English roast beef, did excel. While others made all the wide valley to ring with Nile's glorious battle and God save the king. In such good amusements the evening they passed, Till Aurora appeared to the eastward at last, When, back to their homes, they returned one and all, Well pleased with the sports at the elephant's ball. End of poem Read for LibriVox in Modesto, California, summer 2008.